supposed to help clear all of that. Um, and I've read that it's good for your breathing as well. It has like antibacterial properties. So, um, and I don't have matches. I wish I did. I have my lighter today. So let's light the sage. It's super Red. 
Good, good, good. <laughs> okay. Now to get us more in the zone, because I love a fluffy, a fluffy visual trigger. We have this brush, and I want you to imagine every time I touch, touch you with the brush. our meditation, I am going to pick, without looking, two different chakra stones, and these, there's going to be one chakra stone on top of one card, so there's going to be two card choices, the chakra stone and the card, and then another chakra stone and the card. You're going to pick the stone that you're immediately drawn to. That might be just like a mental, oh my gosh, that one. Or some people feel like a magnetic pull or warmth, um, but just the first one that pops in your head, okay? Because you're choosing it for a reason is what I see it as. And the tarot or roomy cards that I'm going to pull usually that happens when I'm shuffling and they'll fall out or sometimes they'll stick to my hand um, so I'm not like it usually just kind of happens while I'm doing the process so I just wanted to explain that okay so I'm just gonna shake these up let's think of our intention what message do we These are like my two favorite stones, so that is pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, we have the stones picked. Now, 
so oh and this is amethyst which is group one amethyst group one so let's that's what it looks like amethyst it's supposed to be like a purplish it's like a light purple color yeah there you go you can see so that's amethyst you can see kind of what I'm talking about. So, let's see. So, okay. There we go. Okay. Group one, group one. Yep, this one. Oh my gosh. Wow. That one was popping out. So if you notice that, let me know in the comments. Alright. Group 1. Amethyst. Group 1. Amethyst. Okay. Now, group 2. Clear quartz. What message does group two need to hear right now? What message do they need to hear right now? What message do they need to hear right now? this one. That one I just felt like an immediate draw to it, so that's kind of sometimes what happens. Um, but like, as you can see, they definitely kind of stick to your, your hands sometimes, which is really interesting. Okay, so I am now going to show you So 
we're just going to go in numerical order. So we're going to start with group one's reading. Group one, which is amethyst. Amethyst, let's find it. <laughs> realization. Um, it's like clarity. That's what I would describe it as. Um, where you just see things clearly. When your third eye is balanced and open, it's a lot easier to do that. Okay, so with that in mind, it's about the third eye. Let's see. Huh, sorry, it sounds like there's gonna be. So, the picture and card that is for group one did I say group three before? Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. That is for group one is Alusa, Star of Venus. I don't think I've ever pulled this one. And this one is number 26, Alusa, Star of Venus. Okay. So then we're going to go in the Rumi guidebook. your eyes to see and become aware of me. Perceive me with eyes that see the unseen. Come into the mystery to find me. I'm a carefree visitor here for you. Okay, let's see. Okay, perfect. So, the star of Venus is the great androgyny, neither solely masculine nor feminine, but an integration of both. The power it bestows is mighty and utterly in love. When this star seeks us out, multiple blessings that are bestowed and our spiritual growth can be accelerated in ways that may be quite dazzling and surprising to our more limited mindset and belief systems. With great blessings, great growth is possible. However, the blessings don't do the growth for us, making it magically happen. They give us the oomph we need the power and the opportunities and assistance we need, yet it is still we who take the journey, the great spiritual journey. For old souls at this time in Earth's history is the journey from duality to oneness. Many are signing up for the wild, lovely adventure. This oracle has come to you as a reminder that you too have been granted a ticket for that journey. This journey of oneness is not about denying duality, but about experiencing it as an expression of one love. It is about no longer being enslaved by it. It is about avoiding what is not wanted in order to pursue what is wanted. It is about embracing the all, of finding the freedom and joy originally sought, but now through a path that takes you into joy and freedom existing within. To take the great transformation from man or woman into cosmic androgyny does not require that we lose our sense of femininity or masculinity. Rather, they become so superior in development that they cease to be distinguished from each other. Our masculine clarity, with its discernment, practicality, and application, becomes so tender, loving, compassionate, and tempered with grace that the feminine is integrated with it. Our feminine nurturance, dedication, and connection to life become so fierce that discernment and wise action naturally prevail. 
With the great androgynous integration of the masculine and feminine into oneness, men and women of this beautiful earth become capable of new consciousness. It is based in love of service to life, of letting go of judgment, stereotypes, and limited belief systems, and of opening to compassion for all life. As the consciousness is anchored, spiritual growth becomes rapid. This is not necessarily without some bumps and bruises. Letting go of old notions of what it is to be a man or a woman, to be masculine or feminine. Letting go of fear of women or men, of emasculation or victimization. Letting go of wounding are all great steps forward. They promise liberation, empowerment, and compassion, as well as peace and happiness. Yet, they are not easy steps to take. Great resistance can be evoked within you as an individual, and also within the culture around you which you may find your notion of personal personal spiritual empowerment confronting and challenging to their culture of fear-based enslavement of the soul. Okay, so your guidance then is to trust your path, trust your evolution, even in the face of those around you reacting to it, possibly in fear or discomfort. Trust in the paths of others too. For in truth, there is one path, and we are all on it. You do not have to convince anyone of anything. That is not your job. Your job is to embrace your wisdom, embrace your freedom and empowerment to grow spiritually and live your life accordingly. You are becoming, through bestowal of grace, integrated as one. This is sacred alchemy amplified in the star fires of Venus, who loves you as a brother sister and honors your soul with her blessing. Shine true, beloved shine bright. Okay, I've pulled that one before in a video. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Alright, group two. We have the clear, sorry my light. I wanted to do a low lighting video, but then is the clear quartz. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've never pulled this one. Okay. Enter the Garden of Delights 28. Wow. Oh, and, 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 and. And clear quartz is associated with the crown chakra. So the crown chakra is all about spirituality and the colors are purple and white. Oh, and amethyst. Um is indigo. Okay. Cool. Okay. So 28 28 28 enter the garden of delights. Oh, I like this one. granted entry into sacred space, a sanctuary for worship. When the soul is well acquainted with love, life becomes a temple. Sorry. Life becomes a temple of love, the sacred space in which the soul can grow powerful through expansive worship of love. You are being invited by your spiritual brother, Rumi, to enter into life, to commit to coming alive, even if at times this feels deeply challenging. Sometimes a part of you may rather stay locked in an illusion of security for a time, perhaps expressed through the preferences for what is known over what is unknown, what is, what is familiar and comfortable compared to that which is unfamiliar or uncomfortable, to tussle with the parts of us that would deny Aliveness is a natural part of growth. It can seem so risky with such potential for heartache, and yet, what could be more heart wrenching than the slow death of a precious human soul suffocated by fear and inertia? That is the greatest risk of never really and fully being born into this world of wonders. 
You are being asked to cross this threshold from your life that you have been living into the aliveness that is flickering and glowing at your feet. It is love's wild hot embers at your sacred feet. They will erupt at any moment into a holy inferno, taking hold of you and igniting you from within, transforming you into living fire. To come alive requires shedding of so much adherence to the fear of death. The great brother whispers wisdom into your heart. You have heard it, felt it already. The fear of death is so much more terrible than death itself. Nothing is dying in you but fear, so the heart can live more freely. Death and life are twin angels dancing together in communion with the sacred. They are not opposed. They bring the soul aliveness and make the garden of delights possible. They bring the seasons of the soul that foster growth and take the appearance of dying away, which is actually part of the cycle of life. You have been through much death, dear one, around you, within you. You have known this dark angel. That is why you are so full of life. Your attempts to stay as you have been, to render something in your life immobile or impervious to change, have failed. Let us celebrate. There is no delight in frozen moments long since past. Why try to feast upon such food? It will not nourish you anywhere near as deeply and fully as fresh from the oven morsels of life. Come let us taste all that is on offer. We'll drink heavily and satiate our deepest thirst. Let us enjoy the richness of the meal and gratitude for its preparation and awe at the skill involved in such masterful creation. Do not let the memory of death starve you of your participa participation in life. Do you hold on still to that which is past? I will soothe you with a loving touch upon your back, and yet gently I will turn your head to the right and urge you to see the rising sun. Your life is blessed, you see. I want you to know this now. I want you to accept this now. Let those horrors of the past be gone. They are no more than phantoms. The garden is here now to be touched, tasted, seen, heard, felt, inhaled, and loved. This oracle comes to you as a message. A new day is dawning for you. This is the time when the past will soon, very soon cease to have any hold over you. Celebration is imminent. You are invited into the golden light of divine plenty. Put your worries behind you now and step into your divine inheritance where all is sorted according to kindness and grace. Wow. That, okay, so that was the one I picked. Um, very, very, very much what I needed to hear, so... I'm going to save that one to read again later, <laughs> but um, I hope you guys found that relaxing, maybe you found it helpful, maybe you heard um, something in those readings that you needed to hear. Um, if anything resonated with you, I would love to hear about it in the comments, or if you found certain aspects relaxing, let me know too. But as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. That is the best way to support my channel. I appreciate you all. <laughs>